Well, hello, third and fourth grade class. I ho hope you like my costume I'm wearing today. I was doing the review of the Purple Pirates, and I told Sister Robin, I said, well, I'm not going to move in the classroom. I'm just going to stay out here, and I'm going to do our lesson today for Sunday school. And uh, it's so good to see. I can't see you, but you can see me. And I, I, I'm so glad that you're here today. And I hope that uh, Lily's feeling better and that she's back. Jared, it's so good to, or, uh, Jane. Jane, I get you guys mixed up. Jane, I am so impressed with your faithfulness. You are doing such a good job in your faithfulness to God. And I, uh, Isaiah, I hear your Bible quizzing, and just like Miles, and uh, you continue to learn the Word of God. That is so important. Micah, I want to tell you how good I, how much I enjoyed your song the other night. Meant a lot to me. Dakota, it's good to see you. I hope you're still doing your drawings. They are really a good job. And, and uh, Austin, hope you're doing well and you're continuing in the faith and listening to what God says. It's like I said, and, and Emlyn, I want to tell you, you have been doing good. I, I hear you guys have all been praying with other kids on Wednesday night. You're doing the will of God. And today, I'm going to be talking about God's purpose. God's got a purpose in your life. I know a lot of you have repented and have asked God to forgive you and you've been baptized in Jesus' name. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And you that haven't yet, I'm praying God does that. That's his will for you. And once you do this, God's got a purpose in your life. He just doesn't say, that's it. No, he's got something more for you. And um, we're going to be talking about a minor prophet. And sometimes we, we kind of skip over these uh, men of God. And they were in a time when Israel, when the country of Israel was captivity. They were in the land of Babylon under an ungodly king. And this king's name was Darius. And uh, he was wicked. And uh, he didn't recognize the things that uh, the children of Israel observed. Um, he did not recognize that there was one true God, that his name was Jehovah back then, and that the prophets told that in, the ta in, in years to come that there was going to be a Messiah. And it was going to be mad. God manifested in the flesh. It's going to be Jesus. And he, he, just, he just really made it rough for those people. And see, the people of, of Israel were in bondage, were in captivity because they forgot God. They forgot what his purpose was in their lives. They served other gods. They did other things. And um, there were people then that began to pray and say, God, we know this isn't right. Because in this prophet, minor prophet Haggai, told us that uh, they, they let them go back to Israel, but there wasn't enough, it didn't, they grew food, there didn't seem to be enough to satisfy the hunger. You can read it in Haggai chapter 1. And there wasn't enough... Um, money to fulfill their needs and they couldn't get warm enough at night and there just wasn't enough and they said the reason why this was Haggai I said was because you have forgot to honor you forgot God's purpose in your life and that's what we're talking about right now what is God's purpose for your life 
And uh, I'm going to read this 14th verse of Haggai chapter 1. And there were enough people that began to pray, and Haggai said, God, do something. And this is what we read in Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. He was a leader back then. The son of Sheetel, governor of Judah. And the spirit of Joshua, the son of Dodish, the high priest. And the spirit of all the remaining people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord their God. They let the house of God run now. We forget sometimes, and you may say, well, you know, we've got janitors in the church, and we've got people that, you know, take care of this. But what God, what not only, God, not only was God talking about taking care of the house of God, but taking care of their own lives, doing what the purpose of God was. And that was to care for one another. Have you ever seen someone maybe trying to go down the sidewalk with a walker and they're having difficulty and they're trying to carry their groceries. Is there anything for you to do? And I ask you that today. Is there anything that you can do to help? Think about that for a minute. Or there may be someone in school that doesn't know, they're new to the school uh, schoolyard, the school that you're going to. They don't know where to go, what class to go to. What do we do? Do we watch them stumble around and go entirely the wrong direction? What's your job? Think about that. Or, let's, let's make another example. How we fulfill the purpose of God. When where we're living, whether with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or aunt and uncle, they're busy doing something, and you go and you see, look in the kitchen, and there's a pot, that's starting to bubble over. What do we do? Do we stand by and just let them catch it and then there's hot water spilled all over the floor? Or do we take some kind of action and tell them? Think about it. You're fulfilling the purpose of God. Or whenever your mom or dad may, may have a rough time or your aunt or uncle or grandma and grandpa Maybe they go outside and there is a lot of snow and ice on the ground. And you got your boots on, you're already dressed for the warmth. What do you do? Do you go outside where maybe the salt is and throw some salt on that snow and then get a, a snow shovel? and shovel it for them without being told. That's listening to the voice of God. That's the Spirit of God telling you what's right. Or your sister or your brother. We're talking about God's purpose. Can't find something in their room and they're really upset. They may be crying and they're so upset they can't see where, where the where the uh, item is that they're looking for they're so upset and you just glance in there and you see it you fulfill the purpose of God and say hey here it is or do you say ah let them struggle with it they're younger than me they need to learn You may say, Brother Jeff, what does this have to do with the lesson? Jesus taught us in his word, and this isn't what I'm talking about, is it Brother Jeff's ideas? It's 
thus saith the Lord. Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, you do it even unto me. Or maybe you're in church and the janitor or the, the person that picks up maybe missed something, maybe missed um, uh, something, some, some, whether some Kleenexes or maybe they missed some, uh, a toy, a toy car that some child's been playing with. When you see it, to him that knoweth to do good, and do it not, to him it is sin. Your purpose, third and fourth grade class, every single one of you, is to be on guard, to be what's called sensitive to what's going on around you. When people are raising their hands and worshiping God, your purpose in life is to worship God also. When, when, the, when the people, when the whole congregation is singing, and you may say, well, I don't like to sing. Sing anyway. Sing unto the Lord. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto him. That's fulfilling God's purpose. I love all you guys and I'm praying that I can soon be able to be with you. Continue to obey what God says. Continue to do what you're doing. Be a witness to your friends around you and read your Bible every day. And I know Miles and Isaiah continue to study the Word of God. And the other ones of you do the same. God bless you.